Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How are all of you? I see all these smiley faces all around the world tuned in. It is Monday at the time of the live broadcast. But if you're watching this on the replay in the archives at Gym Masters TV, then this could be any day. We're just happy that you're here. We started this show about a year ago, actually, a little over a year ago. Last week was a one-year anniversary. This Wednesday, we're having a very special live anniversary celebratory episode. We hope you can join us this Wednesday. And again, if you're watching this you know, six months from now, none of that really matters. All you have to do is scroll through and binge watch the episodes at Gym Masters TV. I'm your host, Gym Masters. I do this work uh, professionally in television and radio as a, a TV reader, personality, journalist, writer, actor, host, voiceover artist, narrator, writer, producer. And uh, it was back in early May 2020. We said, let's put on the television lights and build the home studio and create this entertainment lifestyle talk show series where we're bringing back the lost art of conversation. So we've been doing that seven days a week and sometimes two shows a day live over 400 plus episodes and they're all available for you to enjoy right here on our YouTube channel. As a matter of fact, we would love it if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel. That really helps the show big time, allows us to continue to deliver all this amazing content that you enjoy every single day with inspiring conversation, amazing entertainment, terrific guests, poignant moments, surprise moments, all location segments and uh, host lovety chats, viewer chats as well that we do and so much more. So there you see it. Subscribe to Gym Masters TV on YouTube and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our amazing content and all these great episodes that we have coming at you day in and day out. An extraordinary week of guests to come. Really amazing guests. We're so looking forward to it and uh, good to have you with us as well. If you missed any of the episodes uh, and any of the guests and any of the topics and anything we've discussed, Again, you can see all the episodes intact there for you on our YouTube channel. Tonight, we are welcoming Grammy and Emmy-winning composer, orchestrator, pianist, producer, John McDaniel. You may recognize him from, of course, his years as music director with Rosie O'Donnell. And, of course, he has done so much more before and after that. But that was a great period of notoriety. We're going to be talking about those years, but, of course, all the other things. He's a prolific uh, entertainer and producer, musician, uh, composer, and uh, just a really all-around nice guy. We're so excited to have him here on the show. First, we welcome you here to the Gym Masters Show Live. Good to have you with us. And again, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. We say hello to all the loveities watching all around the world. It's great to have you with us. And speaking of love, it is Crystal Nolan is here. She says, happy Monday. Hi, Jim and everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic day. She's watching in Connecticut, USA. Looking forward to an exciting show, an inspiring conversation and love it. Good to see you, Crystal. Last time Crystal and I saw each other, I was uh, master of ceremonies for the Chicago concert. Uh, and that was at uh, a venue in Connecticut. And that was really cool. You probably remember that well, right, Crystal? That was a great night. Sherry Larson's watching. She says, good evening, everyone. Hope you all had a great Monday. We sure still are. Good to see you, Sherry. Jen Barry's here from Allentown, Pennsylvania, live. This is part of our Lovety squad. If you're watching for the first time, hey, you're a Lovety too. That's a good thing to be. I uh, hope everyone enjoys the show tonight. Good to have you with us and just relax and you just be well, Jen and Allentown. We always love when you chime in also on the Facebook pages as well. Good Monday evening, Jim and Lovities. I have missed you. I'm happy to be back on Lovity Hall. We welcome John. I'm sure this will be a fantastic conversation. Absolutely. Definitely is. Uh, Ralph Lampkin Jr. is here and says, good evening. Good to see you, Ralph from Indiana. And uh, Merlin is here from Ontario, Canada. Welcome, John, to Lovety Hall. You're now a Lovety. Told him all about the Lovety situation here. He loves it. And uh, Christopher Joseph is here from Ohio. Like, uh, oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's just really holding the hair back because the hair right now goes down to here because I haven't had it cut since the pandemic started, believe it or not. And it's the longest I've had it in my life. <laughs> it's usually short like that guy there or shorter. Uh, so this is kind of been a fun project, <laughs> a self-induced fun project of growing the hair. Hey, Jim and Lovities, I hope you all had a great day. Claudia is watching. Good to see you, Claudia. And Kathleen, hey, Jim, hope you had a good day. We still are. And even better with you here, Kathleen from New York City and Anne from Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Jim and Lovity family. Hope everyone is having a marvelous Monday. We sure are. Absolutely. Good to see you as well. 
Anne. And again, uh, we love all of the folks that are watching here and it's nice to see Jill Jason is here. Hi, Jim. Hi, everyone. XOXO. Good to see you, Jill, and welcome. And Soraya is here. Hi, Jim and everyone. Good to see you, Soraya. We love having you here as well. Kathy Short reporting for duty from Cleveland, Ohio. Good evening, Jim, and lovely. Um, happy Monday to you as well. Good to see all these happy faces and uh, love it. And Maureen, again, she said... Uh, Nice to see everybody here. Good uh, Monday, Jim and Lovity. She's in Arizona, of course. Happy to be back, Lovity Hall. Welcome, John. Uh, wonderful evening conversation. Maybe a world premiere number. <laughs> you never know what happens on the show. You never know. It could be surprises for you. And uh, Merlin says, welcome, uh, John, to Lovity Hall. Now we're Lovity. Christine Clifton is here, of course. She's all very excited that John is here. Uh, greetings, Jim and Lovities. We welcome multi-talented friend John McDaniel to the show tonight. So thrilled he could join us this evening. Let the lovity begin on the Jim Master Show Live. You got it. So Arya, you're watching while on vacation in Williamsburg, Virginia. You went touring there. That's cool. That is nice. And Jen in Allentown, Pennsylvania says, uh, hey, Jim and John and loveities. Well, that's great. It's good to see all these smiley faces. Welcome to the Gym Master Show Live. If this is your first taste of our show, we welcome you. It's a pleasure to have you here. And look at that. I magically turned into John. Isn't that amazing? We, we work wonders here at the show. He is a Grammy and award-winning music director, composer, uh, arranger, orchestrator, producer, and artistic director at the Tony Award-winning O'Neill Theater Center, of course, and recently produced and directed a virtual concert of Sticks and Stones, for which he's also the composer, starring Audrey McDonald. And he also, uh, one of the camp directors of Kristen Chenoweth's Broadway Boot Camp, which really is a fantastic organization. John directed Into the Woods and Hair in Concert, at the historic Patchogue Theater, Sondheim Originals at 54 Below, and Piano Men at Birdland. Broadway music credits include Bonnie and Clyde, Catch Me If You Can, Annie Get Your Gun, Grammy Award, of course, Taboo, Chicago, Grease, Patti LuPone on Broadway and Company, the original cast and concert at Lincoln Center. Now, of course, on television, the Rosie O'Donnell Show is the music director and band leader, two Emmy Awards and eight nominations. He's also collaborated with Cab Calloway and Shirley MacLaine, George Burns, uh, Joel Gray, Carol Burnett, the wonderful Betty Buckley, uh, Bette Midler, and has conducted at the at 15 symphony orchestras across America, including five concerts with his hometown, St. Louis Symphony. Really amazing. Uh, again, he's worked with so many amazing talents themselves, and he's an amazing talent himself. It's a pleasure to have him here on the show. Let's welcome John. There he is in Stereo. There's two of them. <laughs> Where is he? Where is he? Is, is he live or is he Memorex? <laughs> hey, Jim. Good to be with you. Hey, good to see you as well, my friend. You are yeah. there in lovely, warm and sunny South Florida, huh? Yes, indeed. It's beautiful down here. It's beautiful down here all the time. My entire career has just flashed before my eyes when you read that. Deja vu moment, huh? Oh. <laughs> Sometimes oh. when you hear it, when you hear it, because we like to give a thorough intro, because the- Yeah, the no, that's just, really nice. And uh, sometimes when you hear it, you're like, oh, that's right. I did do that. No, I forgot I did that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you sort of- It's a lot, it's you a lot of notes. It. A lot it, of notes. It is, it is. So let's go back to the early years when you started in St. Louis. How did you get started? I know your mother- an influence in your life. Very um, much so. Tell us about some of those really key impactful influences in your youth that spawned on this passion and interest for being an entertainer and in the world of the arts and music. Well, there are three that come to mind that I've uh, been thinking a lot about recently. This this year of lockdown and quarantine has given us all lots of time to, to think and plan and study and move forward and, and think back and reflect. And um, of course, my mother, Jane McDaniel, was my first piano teacher in St. Louis. Um, I went, There was music, she taught piano in the house. So when I was brought home from the hospital, there was music in the house every day. And so, but I started studying uh, technically when I was five, although I never practiced. And I often think what would have happened if I would have <laughs> but anyway, that's another show. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I did I did love playing the piano. And as a young kid, I was 15 when I was uh, in my playing piano in my first restaurant in St. Louis with a violinist, Julie Lanhart. And we played at a restaurant down on Euclid Avenue called Balaban's 
on Monday nights. And we were these two kids in the corner playing sort of semi-classical music. It was so weird. And I would think, you know, where could you get this experience? And then the next year, I got another job um, playing in a cocktail lounge of a Japanese restaurant with my friend Cindy Ely. And we played every weekend all through high school. So I have never done anything but play the piano to make a living. And I feel so blessed and fortunate to be able to say that. Absolutely. That's terrific. I mean, yeah. that's, that's a wonderful journey, a life's journey there. And so what brought you to New York, to the Big Apple? What was the well, opportunity? Let me finish about the other, the mentors, because that was a great question. Yeah. Um, when, when I was much younger, uh, before I ever played at, at the restaurant, I was in a, a children's theater group that Nancy Harvey uh, put together in St. Louis called Art for Children's Theater. And we did, we were in you know, I was 14, 15 in that um, age bracket, but we did big musicals. We did Damn Yankees and West Side Story and Finney's yeah. Rainbow and The Music Man. And it was a life-changing uh, opportunity. And the Broadway musicals just seeped into me like I was home. You know what I mean? It was just, I just knew. And Nancy uh, saw in me and, and, and helped me and pushed me and made me realize that I could actually do this for a living if I wanted to. And then my, the third uh, influence is uh, John Warren Owen, who was my high school vocal uh, acapella teacher. And he was tremendous. And he, he instilled in us such a sense of uh, great music and dedication and pitch and attention to detail. And, and I, I can't thank him enough. Both John and Nancy are no longer with us. But my mom is watching tonight. Your mom's watching tonight. What's her first name? Jane. Jane, welcome to the show. And my dad, Jim, is also watching. So that's Oh, great. what a great name he's got. Jim, yeah. <laughs> Jim McDaniel. <laughs> that's Jim, right. Jenny, Jim, welcome. You've got a fantastically accomplished son there. My folks are watching as well, and the family oh, is watching. Like yeah, it's all in the family. <laughs> it's like Absolutely. old home week. So I would imagine, too, uh, they're very proud. I mean, they've seen you starting out. They've seen the success. They've seen the blood, sweat, and tears. They've seen the sacrifice, your folks, your family. Um, they have always been so supportive, I have to say. And when you have a loving family that's supportive and believes in you and whatever decisions you make and turns and, you know, there, there's the ups and the downs and the yeses and the nos and all the things that happen in one's career, but they're there as part of that support, that grounding, always. that love. Um, I'm sure for them it must be, and well, for you, the fact that they are here present seeing all of this, because not everybody has that luxury. So, when, so they're here and they're seeing it and, and relishing in it with you. But for them too, to see your success uh, must really make them feel pretty it's, good. It's pretty great. And they're, they're very vocal about that. And I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> On every quarter with signs, my oh, yeah. son is on tonight. Make sure you, yeah, I know how that is. They are, they are still living in the house I grew up in, and they're flying to Connecticut this summer to watch, to come to the O'Neill for another season. We're getting back on our feet uh, this summer there. So, uh, yeah, that's a great. wonderful place. Yeah, very familiar because, uh, you know, cr growing up in New York on Long Island, going to Connecticut and Massachusetts every summer for a month is what we did oh, to visit nice. my, my mother's side of the family because she's the youngest of 16. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's the face everybody makes. Well, that's that a lot of kids. The home alone face. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. God bless her. So wonderful mentors. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, only 20 years difference between the oldest and the youngest too, with wow. my mother, the youngest. God bless uh, the Cheers. grandmother. But they didn't have Netflix and all that Hulu back oh, then. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so the mentors, the love of support of family and friends, very important. Yeah. And uh, was after St. Louis, New York, the next choice for you? Well, the you next it, it almost was, but I went to Carnegie Mellon for four yes. years in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, um, yeah. Studied drama there. And um, while I was there, I got a right before graduation. I didn't actually walk down and do the cap and gown. Woo! because I had flown off to Greece to work on a cruise ship for six months, sailing out of Athens. So I, um, and I met a bunch of folks from Los Angeles and uh, one friend in particular, Leslie, who's, who said, come live in LA. And so I did and was there for 10 years and worked in music and theater and a little bit in TV and some little bit of Pachki stuff, but mostly theater and met a bunch of folks who began to, I began to work with more and more, 
uh, legit sort of famous folks. Mm -hmm. And I received my first opportunity in 1993, come to New York and do your first Broadway show. And I said, yes, right, immediately, like, where do I sign? I'm in, yeah. I'm moving, okay, gotta go. That's because it. New York had always been the sort of magnet of, of the theater. Wow, so what was the show? It was the first Broadway revival of Grease, mm. starring Rosie O'Donnell, Megan Mullally, Billy Porter, Sam Harris, on and on and on and on. It was a phenomenal uh, uh, experience. And, a, and the show ran for five and a half years on Broadway and the tour ran for a couple of years on the road. So I thought, oh, this is great. This is easy, every show. <laughs> but every show doesn't run five and a half years. I, I, was, uh, I learned. Wow. What great. was and what was the actual experience like for you? Probably a learning teachable experience as much as it was a lot of hard work and uh, you know, effort put in, huh? It was, it was sort of, uh, it was thrilling to be walking to work on Broadway every night. Uh, the show got, you know, sort of uh, mixed reviews, but the audiences went crazy and it was sold out all the time. Rosie was at the height of her. She'd been in League of Their Own and the Flintstones and she'd been in, uh, um, all those huge movies. So there were people cl just clamoring to get tickets and come in and see it. And the show was really colorful and really bright and the music was fun and, and catchy and everybody was, uh, I have to, I have a visitor who loves oh, yeah. to, be, to be in the shows and oh. he's just dying to get up. Let's do a full Clarence. I was gonna say, yeah, let's see Clarence. We'll do a full screen. Clarence is, hi baby boy. He loves to be in my lap. So he's just gonna get his wish because he can be. How old um, is Clarence? And, Clarence uh, is, uh, he's going to be nine in wow. a couple of weeks. What uh, breed? He's, he's a rescue. He's a Frenchie. Um, oh, we got nice. him a couple of years ago, and he's a beautiful baby. And he had some back surgery in January, which was very yeah. <laughs> for the daddies. It was very deep. Yeah, yeah. But, but he's, he's better. He's getting better. He is better. Speaking um, of getting better, where we all seem to be in a position where things are getting better, how have you been during the craziness? Of, there's been a lot of teachable moments and we've all paused and we've had this time to reflect and look forward in our lives as far as what we want to do next and maybe some of the new chapters. And I keep saying, I hope that we sort of rise from the ashes, more empathetic, more compassionate, more unified in many different ways, because we really do need one another. We all have a right to be at the table, to uh, you know, express and share and collaborate. Um, how have you been through it all? How have you stayed creative, collaborative, and connected and sane? And everybody oh, says, well, that sane last is part, not- you just yeah. lost me. <laughs> That's what everybody <laughs> says. Jim, get back Ooh, to me on the sane. <laughs> no um, sane. No, I think actually staying creative has kept me sane. We yeah. have this very pleasant, comfortable, modest home here that we have loved being in with a pool in the backyard and a really nice area outside. And it's been, um, I pivoted very quickly to working online and creating music tracks for people who, um, and producing stuff, uh, musicals. And I did my series Sunday Tea with John McDee, which took me from May to May. Um, I just did the last episode a few weeks ago. Um, so I did, it was a monthly show at first. I did seven weeks in a row. Um, and it was a live, I'm playing and singing and telling stories and, uh, and bad jokes and um, songs. <laughs> and uh, not really, well. Entertaining. <laughs> I guess, do, just doing my thing. Kind of back to my roots. When I was in at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh, I played in the piano bar a lot. Uh, yeah. And so it, it sort of felt like it was a little bit comfortable, but it wasn't really comfortable at first last May. But then I got really um, more comfortable with it. And I really do enjoy doing it. And I'll do more, I'm sure. But um, I had to sort of break it down. I had to finish the series because I have such a busy uh, next many months ahead. So I, I, it was, uh, it was time and it, it felt good a year. Have but, you found uh, the phone ringing and think the projects and productions really starting to ramp up now? I have to say, yeah. Um, it, it, it's been busy. I think I was busier this past year here in this house than I've been in the last three years put yeah. together. Yeah. Um, it, it just, it, it's one thing after another and I'm so, delightfully busy really happy to say that i love working and i love music and i feel lucky to i learned logic i learned iMovie i learned a lot of programs that have helped me become a really a better producer and, and someone who can do their own work from home and um working on uh, a lot of projects and folks are 
recording at home and then sending me wave files and I drop them into Logic and put together and I'm making music like I have never been able to make before. And that is the one of the silver linings of this time, for sure. It's been like a blessing, absolutely. What, what are some things maybe that you learned about yourself during all of this? <laughs> I'm old, <laughs> I turned 60. <laughs> Oh, well, happy birthday. I was thinking things like, you know, tenacity, resilience, all of that, but no. happy, happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just old. Uh, no, <laughs> I, uh, I have learned that I, um, I can, I, it's not too late to learn things. Right. I'm still learning stuff. And yeah. that is really exciting. And I will carry that with me as we move forward into this new normal where we'll get on planes again and fly to LA and do a show and to New York and do stuff. and uh, But we'll also be able to do the virtual along the way. Uh, you mentioned Chris and Chen Broadway probably boot camp, which I'm doing yeah. in a couple of weeks. Yeah. We are, uh, the campers this year are from all over the country. They'll be virtual, but we will be in, I'll be with Kristen and Richard J. Alexander, my co-camp director and the core team in Oklahoma, in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, where we will run Command Central and do all kinds of performances and <clears throat> and run the camp from there. So it's a combination of being in person and virtual. And the same with the O'Neill this summer, we have a virtual element with uh, master classes with folks who are far away and we don't necessarily have to fly them in and put them up and bring them in. It's, we can just beam them in. And so it's it's our first summer doing that sort of hybrid conference, which is really exciting to me. That was a long answer, but that was I have learned nothing about myself, <laughs> except I know how to talk. It was very detailed and thorough and very efficient. <laughs> uh, how did you get involved with the camp? How did that happen for you, your involvement? So Richard Richard was uh, had been the camp director for like three years, three or four years. And then in 2019, he called me in the winter and said, hey, I'm going to be uh, with Barbara Streisand in the UK, right. he's her director. Right. Um, and I need, would you, would you like to fill in for me as the camp director? And I thought, oh my gosh, what a great opportunity. So I said yes immediately and did it, had the best time. And then in 2020, Richard and I were going to be co-camp directors because he was available and so was I. And they, they loved us both and we loved doing it. So it was really a, and then wah, wah, no camp because we're shut down. So uh, we had to cancel last year because it was too soon to sort of figure out anything. And then um, this year though, what are you calling? This year uh, we will be doing this sort of hybrid virtual version. And I'm so excited. The kids are amazing. We have 130 kids from across not only the country, but the world who will be, we have this beautiful girl from the Philippines who is so good and so beautiful and talented and sweet and sort of honest and, um, and she will be waking up at whatever time it is to take class with us. I think it happens in the middle of the night for her. So she's going to flip her, her schedule around for a week and be with us virtually, which is really exciting. That is fantastic. Really cool. That's that's great. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing to be a part of. Absolutely. Inspiring young minds and empowering and encouraging them. And 100%. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing, John. Um, so you mentioned Greece, of course, which is a phenomenal project to be a part of. Annie, get your gun, another legendary one. How did that cross your path? So I had been in Annie, get your gun when I was in high school. So I knew the show really well. And the same producers, um, Barry and Fran Weisler, who had produced Greece, were producing Annie, get your gun. So they asked me, would I be interested in creating new music arrangements for the Broadway revival? Oh, who's going to be in it? Bernadette Peters. Yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> I'll do it. And did it and had the best time with Bernadette and Tom Wopat and the entire creative team. Peter Stone rewrote the book and Graziella Danielle, the most beautiful director. And we ran, that show ran for two and a half years with a lot of different Annies once Bernadette left after her nine months. Uh, Reba McIntyre came in, who was sensational. That was like the perfect combination of actor and role. You know, she was just, she was, she was funky and she sang great and she was she was excellent. They were all great. Susan Lucci was in it and um, uh, Cheryl Ladd and a lot, a lot of ladies played Annie in that revival. That was fun. And then Mary Lou Henner took it on the road and was great. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, was, 
it's a great score. It's one one great song after another in that show. And uh, and then we were out of town. We were at the Kennedy Center, and Barry Weisler came backstage and said, "Well, we're just about to Broadway. Would you consider producing the cast album?" And I my jaw dropped, and I thought, "Wow, I've never even considered that." And yes, I would love to do that. And so. We did it, and uh, my co-producer Steve Ferreira and I were nominated, and we won the Grammy. But what? Yeah, yeah, what? yeah. Nuts! It was nuts, but it was uh, a, such a beautiful project. And, and that was what year? That record. And what was that year? Uh, Ninety-nine. Wow, that's con congratulations! And I ask that because. We have this uh, little clip here of you at the Grammys and you're tickling the ivories. So let's take a look at that and we'll talk about it when we come back. It's a really right. a nice, cool clip. You know, not many people realize that orchestration is everything. Before My Fair Lady was orchestrated, it sounded like vaccination day at the dog pound. I kid you not. <laughs> here to explain is the award-winning conductor of such Broadway shows as Grease in Chicago and Miss Rosie O'Donnell's favorite band leader, John McDaniel. Hey. Thanks, Nathan. What's an orchestration, you may ask? Let me show you. Irving Berlin wrote this simple melody for Anna Get Your Gun. You may recognize it. Berlin wrote it, and then he turned it over to an orchestrator who wrote musical parts for strings, horns, reeds, and percussion until Shazam, you got this. Elliot? Excellent. That's what an orchestration is. Oh my gosh, I have not seen that. Of course, we know that was the Tonys, not the Grammys, but that's okay. Yes, um, the Tonys, the Tonys, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that, that, was, was, that was extraordinary moment playing on the piano of Radio City Music Hall just for a moment on national television. Mm, speaking... Speaking of national television. Yes. Oh, there's, uh, there she is. There is. Uh, we'll play there's this. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll play this uh, cool clip we've got here, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, the whole relationship with Rosie and the show. Great. Of course, Great. everybody knows you from there as well, uh, which is amazing. Take a look at this, folks. This is something really cool. Quite funny, too. You know, but, you know, it's the first day of sleep. It's the first day of this week. Yeah, it is. Today. It's May sweet, but I guess it's starting April, whatever. Yeah. So, uh, but I was thinking we could do like a big production of it. You know, like they have Santa Claus and uh, and like a dancing bear and uh, uh, what? I don't want to do a production number. And hula girls. Listen, every time it's sweet, we do a production number. You yeah, know? but they're fun. Yeah, but I don't want to do it. Okay. Well, okay. I don't want to do it. No right. Santa Claus. No dancing but, hula girls. No. <laughs> no. Listen, we do you know. so many, and sweet is no. We. Let me All just right. say okay, this. I just thought. Do you know that it's Shirley Temple's birthday? I happy birthday, Shirley! Yeah. Happy birthday, Shirley! Happy birthday! From you to me, I sing the part wrong. It's hard to do a song in your voice, yeah. That didn't rhyme. I'm a jerk, cause I didn't get enough sleep before work. I was all blamed. I miss party of us that will agree. Happy birthday, Shirley Temple. How about that? Oh yes. Uh, Rosie, I don't mean I don't mean to go on, but what about we can have like class? We can have like, like a first grade ballet class. It could be so cool. And like uh, singing dancing cops. New York cops. It could be I mean we could put it all together. John. I said no. I I know, but I don't think it would get what? You love doing it. I don't even list every time. Other shows, they do, you know, list, you know, Slava Dan. Yeah, we don't need that kind of thing. What are you for the puppets? That kind of pandering okay, for just, ratings. Okay. All right. Bringing out ballerinas and Santa Claus. It's okay, crazy. Okay, all right. Crazy. Okay, absolutely. Okay. okay, all right. 
Another thing, um, in North Carolina, yeah. there was a giant strawberry that was stolen, and this man was really upset. It was a 20-foot-tall inflatable <laughs> berry, and he put it on the top of his stand for the you pick berry plantation, oh, yeah. and they don't know who stole it. Isn't that sad? They have one suspect. Who is it? The guy who bought 4,000 cases of whipped cream. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The giveaway. Yeah. Rosie, I can't, I cannot let this go. I can't, I can't let it go. We could have Uncle Sam, if we could have like the audience involved, they could do the wave. You know what? Yeah. See, they, they want it. And Rosie, we could even, we could even get like the New York Mets to show up. You're not gonna get the Mets to come and we do could. a production we could. number, John. We could. Just because it's sweet. We could do it. John, I don't wanna do it. <laughs> Oh, that was some crazy stuff. Well, I said that's <laughs> what a what a great surprise. So fun. And with our New York Mets. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh my god. We would stop at nothing. Now, how long would it take to put something like that together, like that number? Those would take sort of the better part of a week to sort of figure out. I the, we would um we'd have to figure out a concept and and then you know, of course you have to find out if We'd say, oh, how about the Mets? Well, let's call. And they would call back because it was the Rosie O'Donnell show. And so we, we were able to pull that together pretty quickly, strangely, because we were doing five hours of live TV every week. And you know, Jim, what that's like, because <laughs> you're doing that right now. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. But thrilling and, uh, and magical time, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Great comments. Christine says Sweets Productions always fantastic. Now seeing this clip, I actually remember this moment on the show. Christopher Joseph in yeah. Ohio. Great clips. Anne in Florida. Fantastic. What well, crazy people. Too funny from Merlin in Canada. Cool from Kathleen in New York, who actually works with the New York Mets. So oh, she, cool. I'm sure she absolutely loved that. Christine yeah. says uh, that was fantastic. Um, and Merlin says that was great. And Maureen says that was awesome. And Kathleen's loving your dog. <laughs> oh, thanks, Kathleen. Me Christine too. said her family and I were fortunate enough to see any got your gun, get your gun uh, with Bernadette Peters in '99. So fabulous, which is really yeah. really cool. So uh, and what fun and cool. Thanks, guys, for all the comments. Yeah. How, now you met you guys met not in New York, but you met out in California in LA. You and uh, Rosie, right? Tell us about that and the friendship that was formed, and then how you ended up being a part of her television show. Yeah. So we had known each other at parties. We knew a lot of the same sort of folks, and we'd wind up at a party, and I'd be at the piano, and she'd be singing. And then she came to see, I was doing a show at the Westwood Playhouse with Patti LuPone, which we recorded as Patti LuPone Live, which is still um, a great record and I'm super proud of that concert. 
Rosie came to that a few times and we would wind up at the Westwood Hotel across the street um, at, the, at the piano bar and singing show tunes into the night. So we became <clears throat> kind of uh, really, really friendly. And very soon after that, I got the offer to do Grease on Broadway. And so Fran Weisler called me and told me that she wanted to have Rosie O'Donnell come over to my house and sing for me. And I would tell Fran if she could sing or not. Well, I already knew what her what she sounded <laughs> like because we were, you know, we were kind of good buds. But um, so Rosie came over, knock, 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 open the door. She's rolling her eyes. All right, I guess we have to do this. Uh, it's Broadway, so okay. All right, so we went to the piano and she she sang. We we went through. There are worse things I could do, and it was fine. You know, it was like the way she sings. It's she sings like a very specific way. Um, and she left and I called Fran and said, she's great. And so <laughs> Rosie and I were friends, fast friends, uh, certainly after that, because I, you know, I had her back from the beginning. And then she was great. She was great in the show. Although she, you know, she got bored easily and quickly because she's stand up and she's, when she's doing stand up, it's changing all the time. And it's a different venue, different jokes, different show. Yeah. And if the show's not going well, she can change it up and do that. But you know, in a Broadway show, it goes the way it goes every night. So yeah. um, that was a challenge for her. But you know, she was she was great. She was great at it. So yeah. for you, being so immersed in that show day to day like that, and you know, obviously uh, very popular, was through the roof during the you know years it was on, and yeah. it had a lot of production elements and music and all kinds of different uh, you know technical aspects to it. Uh, it wasn't just a sit, chat, out. There was a lot of, you know, yeah, energy, had, energy in that show. Full half hour pre-show. Brian Bradley, who played Vince Fontaine, would come out just as the doors were opening to let the audience in, and he'd be spinning records up on his DJ booth and getting people up and doing dance contests and limbo and all this stuff. So the show started the minute they opened the doors, and it was going, 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 all the way up until curtain when Marsha Lewis as Miss Lynch came down uh, and started taking her ruler and smacking the audience. And it was <laughs> super fun right from the start. It was, it was amazing. And my favorite part was trying to make Rosie laugh yeah. during the show because I'm down in the pit, hidden from view pretty much. And so I did my Liza Minnelli and I did all kinds of uh, things to, to crack her up. And that was, that was always fun. <laughs> with, what funny thing to wear or whatever, you know, it's good. That was a great moment that we just shared on the show. Are there some other standout moments that you remember from being a part of that series that stand out for you, episodes uh, that you, are some of your favorites? Well, you know, when when Titanic, the musical, was first on Broadway, a lot of people were saying, oh, it's never going to make it. Everybody knows how it ends. <laughs> you know, it's it's maybe not, uh, maybe not working. But again, Peter Stone, the great Peter Stone, uh, was the book writer. He made so many changes in previews that that show got better and better and better. Rosie went to see it, loved it so much. We had the cast on three different times. And the, I think the third time we, uh, we had a, a kid whose mother needed some treatment that they couldn't afford. And so we raised money for that. And I remember just being a weepy mess when that, when that uh, segment happened. The entire cast of Titanic came down the aisle singing Sail On, Sail On. Great ship, Titanic. It was absolutely... Um, I was a wreck for like a day after that. It was really moving, really beautiful. Yeah. I mean, that's another thing too, because that show certainly had those poignant and beautiful moments. Uh, and you got a chance to have some really incredible people on there too. I know Mary Tyler Moore stopped by and some others uh, who aren't even with us anymore. For sure. But over the years, you've had an opportunity to work with, uh, I had an opportunity to chat a couple of times with Carol Burnett and she is, oh, nice. and you've worked with her. And yeah, we're good friends actually. One of those people who matches exactly what you would hope. No yes. airs, warm, funny, <laughs> authentic, genuine, loving, and real. Uh, there's nothing, there are no airs about her. She's just wonderful. And then somebody else that you worked with uh, that I think it's pretty cool. And he's usually my sidekick here every night. Got to work with George Burns, huh? George Burns, <laughs> yes. So um, what was that like? So George came on to do a one-nighter on the Fair Sea when I was working on a ship. I think it was in 85 out of uh, out of South Florida. And he, um, he came on and did mainly jokes, but he sang a little bit. 
and worked with the band and it was a tremendous experience. He was so alive and well and with it. Um, he and I actually sat for 20 minutes. I was just telling a friend um, that he and I sat for 20 minutes after the rehearsal in the, in the show lounge and just yeah. talked about stuff. I was living in LA and I had always wanted to be in New York and he was really just like, hey, you just gotta follow your dream, just do your thing. And he was really, he was, uh, it was fantastic to spend a moment with him because he was such a legend. Yeah, absolutely. And his show was so great. The audience went insane. It was, he really had it down. He knew just what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah. And he played God too. <laughs> oh God. You yes. can't go wrong with playing God. Um, Shirley McLean too, working with Shirley. Tell yep. us about that experience. Yeah. We did a concert. So um, we did a concert down at the Kravitz center in West Palm beach once uh, Michael Feinstein was on the bill and uh, the Momix dance. I think that's the name of it. Um, anyway, it was a sort of a kind of a variety show. It was new year's, and Shirley was the headliner. And she, I think it might've been the last time she got up and did her sweet charity stuff with full orchestra. And it was, ah, oh, it was heart stoppingly fantastic to work with her. Um, she was filled with joy uh, with the music and um, it was spectacular. Mm, absolutely. Uh, Carolina Force says, I think maybe when it comes to the Rosie O'Donnell show, there was a really crazy guest on several times, blonde guy who wore wild glasses, can't remember his name, but do remember it. Joe from New Jersey. <laughs> what? <laughs> Carolina Four? I'm stumped. Do you want to, uh, you've stumped the guest. I'm stumped. Do you want to phone a friend, John? <laughs> I may have to. Yeah. Yeah, the guy, the the blonde, so blonde guy who wore wild glasses, can't remember his name, but do remember Joe from New Jersey. Joe, from, uh, not Joe Piscopo from New Jersey. I don't know. You would figure, right? I don't right? know. He's like, playing Joe I know in Jersey. It, it, I was going to say, is there any other? Um, Joel Gray, of course, working with Joel Gray is always a blessing. Tell us about some of the collaborations with Joel Gray. Yeah, so I first met Joel when I was living in L.A. before I moved to New York. And um, I, one of my favorite things about working with Joel was that I got to meet and work with Peter Matz, who was the legendary uh, Broadway orchestrator, music director, who then did the Carol Burnett show for 11 years in LA, along with a million other um, uh, television specials and movies and TV shows, and then Broadway shows even after I, I uh, worked with him. But Joel, uh, Joel and I did some one-nighters. There were some shows out in Palm Springs it was my first time being in Palm Springs, driving out from Los Angeles to, to work with him at one of the big um, hotels there, which was fan such a great show. And then when I was, there was a period of time where I was producing, not producing, well, I sort of was, putting together concerts for the St. Louis Symphony, Pops concerts. And I brought Joel Gray to uh, St. Louis and a few other, um, you know, one-nighter orchestra dates and stuff that we did together through the years. And we're still really close. And the last time I saw Joel was on the subway in New York. It's just <laughs> such a funny thing. Um, although he and I had talked about um, doing a thing together last summer and then everything shut and we haven't picked that up again, but we will. But you will. That's right. We you will. will. Yeah, we're still really close. Also working with the wonderful Betty Buckley too, huh? And I'm still working with Betty and love her to the to the ends of the earth. I remember when I lived in L.A., I, she had uh, some of her recordings. I had cassettes in my car, and I remember speeding down Sunset Boulevard, listening to Betty Buckley belting out these magnificent high E's and, and being so interesting and uh, textured and such a wildly great storyteller. And then years, years later, um, I, we did an opening number on the Tony Awards when Rosie was hosting, with uh, Jennifer Holliday and uh, Betty Buckley and Patty Lapone, right? Right? Oh, don't get old, Jim. It's hard to remember all of them. But <laughs> I remember going to Betty's apartment and rehearsing and just thinking to myself, oh my gosh, you're in Betty Buckley's apartment. You're, in Betty. you're playing her piano and you're this, what's happening? It was so crazy. And right. now we're still, and she's, uh, Betty's doing one of the virtual master classes this summer at the Yes. Union. So we're still yeah. in each other's orbit and I, I adore her. Yes, we were gonna have her come on in the spring, but she's doing the master classes. So I think it's gonna be late summer. Oh, good. 
the last time uh, right. we saw each other, I saw her was actually at the 100th birthday gala celebration of the Schubert Theater in New Haven, Connecticut. Oh my gosh! At, yeah, at their big gala, and they what they did, which was really fantastic, is they brought back. Uh, as many of the original artists who have ever graced the stages over the years, which Betty had, and right. it, was, it was wonderful. And Rex Smith was there, of course, oh, yeah. Rex Smith and so many others. Yeah. It was really a wonderful night. And What uh, a history that theater has. You know, the original My Fair Lady in Oklahoma, just incredible. History. Like the uh, Long Wharf Theater as well, too, yeah. another one where a lot have gone through. And of course, the Goodspeed Opera House. And yeah. I've all, worked them all, Jim. Oh, very familiar <laughs> with them all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good speed musicals and everybody. Love that um, place. You, you, theater, television. Um, do you love television or is theater always first in your heart, John? I think that live thing is hard to beat. It really is. Live TV was great. And we were lucky because we were live. We were live, uh, the Rosie Dahl show was live the first year. And I think that electricity of being live and knowing that you can't, you can't go back, you can't stop tape is, is electrifying and you can feel it. We had a new executive producer for season two and she, uh, over the hiatus after the first year, she said, you know what? We need to be able to create promos to, sh to show the folks what's coming on the Rosie Dahl show. Right. So we need to tape the, the day before. So we'll do Monday, we'll tape, Tuesday show on Monday, and then we can create promos. And, then, and all, as soon as that happened, the entire, I mean, it didn't change altogether, but it was definitely when you knew you could stop or, you know, something fell over. All right, stop, hold, go back, you know, and it just, it lost that to me. And yes. I think to everybody else, because we went back to live years, three, four, five, six. Yes. Um, yeah, it, it's, there, there's, you can feel it. It's tangible. So yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't as good. There's something about that energy. And, and like you say, the fact that sets can fall down and things can happen and it's, and the timing has to be more really exact. And it, it's, I've done so much live television radio myself. So I know what you mean as far as there is a difference between doing things live and then doing it teleprompter, scripted, perfected, yeah. redone. Yeah, take two, which is okay. Per, per, you know, made perfect with super editing and all. And uh, really, there is something about it. And that's why people love stage too, because yeah, it's- Yeah, I think it's, the theater, it's, it's always different, even though it's, it's uh, in the play is the same words, but the, the things will be a little bit different. It's living right in front of you. It's not, uh, it's not a movie. Carolina Four has chimed in with an update. Joe from New Jersey was a fan who called Rosie at her hotel room and she picked up, had a conversation, and then she invited him on the show several times. <gasps> right. <laughs> right. Now now I remember. Thank you for that, that uh, remembrance. Remember, it's down uh, memory lane there. Uh, that, was the, that was the cool thing. Like anything that would happen in her life was was fair game for the show if, if right. they wanted to come on. I mean, that was really fun. Right, right. I thought the show, I thought she was great with the show. I thought it was, uh, you know, terrific. And has she ever thought of uh, doing it again or no? Yeah, no, we, there have been times where it has, it's bubbled up and she's, she's even reached out to me and said, hey, would you ever think about, and then you may know last um, March, we did a reunion on, yes. uh, on YouTube. It was one of the first big fundraisers. Um, uh, we raised money for the Actors Fund that night. And like over a hundred thousand dollars or something. It was extraordinary. Yeah, four and a half hours of yeah. guests and stuff. And I was on at the beginning and we talked like, well, you know, it was great. I, I, I would love to revisit it at some point. I think it would be a hoot. Yeah. And by the way, June 10th in just a few weeks is the 25th anniversary of the debut of the show. Has it been that long already? <laughs> 25 years ago, Jim. Crazy. Well, yeah. Yeah. Have a swig or two. Make it a double. It's water, but let's <laughs> yeah. have a double. Yeah, it's a double. Double H2O. Um, and Christine says, oh, yes, I remember Joe from New Jersey. He brought funny moments to the show. How could we forget him? Soraya says, Jim, please ask John if he misses doing daytime talk shows, daytime television. Uh, so what do you think of the talk shows now? I don't really watch TV during the day, I've got to be honest. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I heard Ellen is, is hanging up. Ellen's wrapping up. Yeah. But not for another year and a half or something. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, 
I, you know, miss, it, it was a lot. It was hard. It was hard work, but super gratifying. I could have gone on a little longer, but Rosie was absolutely done. And, and she, yeah. the kids were growing up. It was time yeah. for her and totally get it. It, it. it takes a lot out of you. Yeah. There's a lot of energy and, and you know, you're, you're, you're in it and on it constantly. And you want to be fresh. You want to be alive in there for, for right. every music moment, every guest, every, you know, you, it's not something you can phone in. You can't no. fake it. You have to actually be be there and be your best all the time. So when uh, that wrapped up, what came next for you? You were already had your hands on so many other things all yeah, the time. Yeah, I was still anyway. doing a lot of concerts and writing, <clears throat> composing, and um, and then I did quite a few more Broadway shows after that while I was still in New York. Um, it was it actually when it, when the show first ended, it was very quiet. I think I don't know. It just I I wasn't putting myself out there. I wasn't like, hey, let's. I was a little bit. Um, I was able to just take a minute and, and relax. And then I started thinking, okay, this minute is going on. Is the fun ever going to ring? And then it started ringing again. So, you know, everything is cyclical and everything has its time. I think they call that the power of positive thinking, right? <laughs> I think so. And I need a break. And I won't, I won't necessarily take a break. Like I work seven days a week now yeah, yeah. and I love it. But uh, it's a lot, it's, you know, I'm busy. What do you do to chime down, deamp, and and relax? What is your go-to Zen place, Zen scenario for you to be able to shut the creativity off if you can? It's a glass of wine in the pool under the stars, and believe me, it works. That's <laughs> not a bad one. That's a good one. <laughs> believe me, it works. It's nice. It's really That's... nice to be outside at night. I, I I love it. We have some beautiful lights, and it's and the stars are vivid down here, and um, so that's, that kind of puts me in a great frame of mind to go to bed and get up and do it all over again. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cause you need to reboot and need to refresh. And absolutely. I mentioned just some of the names of the folks you've had an opportunity and I know you, you find it all a blessing and all a joy and, and you don't take any of it for granted. You know, uh, you know, probably have many pinch me moments through your career. Um, all the time. and there's, Carol, of course. Oh, that's, that's right. when she came to see my Joe's Pub show. Is New that York. what that was? Yeah. Mm, yeah. 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 It's just absolutely amazing. Here's another cool shot. The color is my hair. Oh, oh yeah. Jerry oh, Herman. Oh, oh, this one with the hair? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't choose a color, so I wore them all. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Herman. This is I, this was actually taken at good speed, by the way, oh, when was, Jerry yeah. was honored um, one summer and I presented an award to him uh, for his lifetime achievement and just fantastic guy. I was able to see Jerry actually um, just about a month before he passed last two years ago down here. Um, uh, my friend Clea Blackhurst and I went to Jerry's beautiful, as you can imagine, full floor, uh, uh, I say apartment, but it's like a house. Yeah. And it's like 14 houses uh, yeah. in the sky. Um, uh, right on Miami Beach, so beautiful. And he had a song he wanted to give to Clea, and so um, he gave her the song. He actually had us come so that he could give her the song, and then I played his beautiful uh, uh, concert grand piano in his living room, and, and he uh, kept giving me, like, you're good, and I was like, uh, oh, my God. Is it Clea Blackhurst? Yes. Oh, do we, you know Clea? Yeah, very, yeah. She's Isn't she great? She, I love she's her. great, and it was really hilarious when she was on this show here. She came on. Uh, oh, good. I think it was like late summer, early fall, and she was having a. She was in her apartment. You know, it was the height of COVID and everything. Yeah. And uh, her Wi-Fi was sort of going in and out, in and out. So we were making do with whatever was happening. She'd disappear, and then she'd try this phone, come back on, then try this tablet, try this <laughs> laptop. And, and it was all threaded together. It was hilarious. It was funny. I played, you know, played off yeah. it. She, she played off it. It was cool. She, was great. It, the conversation, because of her signal and, and the batteries running out and everything else, ended up in her laundry room in <laughs> front of her basket of laundry. Perfect. <laughs> And then the viewer, Why not? She, she started folding laundry and then the viewers started wanting to know, you know, what detergent does she use and all of that. Right. So she says, oh, well, I use this. And I, I think it was. Do you so really hard. wear those socks? <laughs> so she's there and the lighting, you know, she's like, oh my God, how's the lighting here? And let me shift over here by the dryer and all this. Yeah. Things. 
It was fantastic. Just a few months ago, I invited her down to Florida. I was doing some live shows at the Gulf Shore Playhouse in Naples. Oh, yeah. And she did a week, uh, and it was so much fun. We had such a blast singing together and doing a show. Yeah, she's-, she's Merman's Apprentice, that was fantastic, too. Yeah. She's just unbelievable. You yeah. mentioned Good Speed. I had an opportunity, to, um, I don't know if you've been to it, to go, to be invited to go by a friend who's a lyricist uh, to the writer's colony that they have with good speed musicals where you go and you stay in sort of those uh, homes yeah, and, those and then be that beautiful housing they have. You know, I've passed that a million times and I never knew that that was part, part of, of good speed, I yeah. thought those were just new homes that people lived in. And then when I got invited, it was tremendous. And yeah. everybody is sort of working through and working out their productions and everybody else is sort of feeding off the energy of each other and yeah. tossing ideas around how this might help and how that might help. That's a really great experience. It's a fertile place, very much like the O'Neill is. So many great musicals have been developed at Goodspeed and also at the O'Neill, and they're just down the road from each other. That's right, absolutely, yes. I used to work on radio and television out in New London, Connecticut. Oh, uh, yeah. And Hartford and New Haven, yeah, absolutely. Very Beautiful familiar. Beautiful country. My sister and, lives there now. Oh, really? In Madison, yeah. Yeah, Madison, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful area, the coast, absolutely. And Harkness Park and all through there. Right. Oh, you know. Summer at Harkness. <laughs> you know yes. Harkness. If you know oh, Harkness, yeah. you really know. Yes. Summer at <laughs> Harkness. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Pepe's Pizza in New Haven, all of that. Oh. Um, here's another cool shot. Oh, yeah. Presenting an award at the Mac Awards, I think. The Manhattan Association of Cabaret. They used to always do that at BB King's. I can see the, the logo. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. BB B.B. King's, uh, too bad that's gone now, I know. Uh, so many places, oh, uh, wow. and even, Yeah, Brooke Shields. Well, uh, that Brooke was, Shields. When, that's, that is, was that when you were auditioning for uh, Blue Lagoon? I was, uh, yeah, I didn't get it though. <laughs> no, but I remember, like it was yesterday, uh, seeing, going to see uh, Blue Lagoon. Um, yes, at Christopher Atkins. Atkins. Yeah, it was, I was still in college and uh, just thought it was, I, I loved it and became a huge Brooke fan. And then Brooke uh, played Rizzo in Greece on Broadway. Right. Um, and we made a second cast recording with Brooke too. Yeah. Um, so we, we've been great friends through the years. She's a fantastic person. Yeah. Beautiful soul and um, very, very. And witty, very funny sense of humor, dry sense of humor too. Absolutely. Quick. Oh my gosh. Suddenly Susan was hilarious. That's where yes. we first got to know Kathy Griffin, of course. That's right. Right yeah. on, on uh, NBC, exactly, and of course the incomparable uh, Cheetah Rivera. And this was from the visit, right? I uh, went to. Oh see, yeah. I was invited to the opening night, oh, uh, nice. of, and then the after party that they had had, and th that was a great show. I really Wasn't enjoyed she spectacular? it. Spectacular, yeah. She yes. Was I, yeah. I was so fortunate to get to see it. it didn't run all that long, but no, it was stark, stunning production, and she was her. She's such a phenomenal uh she's like a magnet and you just can't take your eyes off of her and she'll just move a finger and you see that i mean it's just yes. it's tremendous her yeah. economy and her her experience her years of experience i mean the original west side story for crisis yes and yes. before that you know um, yeah and so uh yeah she's she's a treasure we just had uh and we talked about uh, Rita uh, quite a bit, and he absolutely loves her. Tremendous long-term friendship. George Takiris was on the oh, show yeah. recently, and because there's so you mean do you mean Rita Moreno? Uh, because no, because they were in the movie together. Right? Yes, yes, and he the relationship that they have still in, is intact all these years later. I think they're both a part of the new Spielberg West Side Story movie as well. Yes, right, right. They're doing the press on all that, and yeah. uh, he he's just you know sweet guy, very super talented, and yeah. uh, we worked just, together once out in L.A. And then a uh, Hirschfeld. Tell I know. Can you imagine? That's not something that just that happens. Yeah. One of the last folks he drew. Really? Yeah. That was a special That's... commission. And he was. When was that? Tremendous. Oh, yeah. That was. You know, uh, when that was? Yeah. It was, um, dur it was during the show. We, I, if I looked and saw what year he passed, which yeah. might have been 2000 yeah. or 2001. 
Yeah. Um, I just saw some cool interviews with him talking about early, show, like seeing shows in, in the 30s. I mean, he yeah. was, so that, that's probably his, his span of life. That, that would make sense that it was like 2000, 2000 or something like that. So you have the copy, you have a copy of that? I have the original hanging over the piano. Uh, the piano, yeah. That's 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 quite a tribute. This is a great shot of you guys too. Oh yeah. My girl. Lots She's of love, huh? Such a fantastic person. Uh so completely always honest with you and always uh respectful and so generous and loyal. Oh my gosh. She's and, the greatest. And from Comac, Long Island. I know, right? <laughs> I used to I live further out east. Did you? Um, yeah, I'm from, yeah, from the island originally. Yeah, then, so I lived. I had a place in Wading River. I don't know. If you oh, know sure. It. Yeah, for, right. For all the rosy years, so my commute was the LIE back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I mean, I also was in the city, but on the on the days off, I go out to Wading River and drive past the Comac Cinemas. You remember those blue letters? That's um, off exit fifty two off the Long Island Expressway. Yes, yeah, exactly. Be they're not there anymore. But oh. all those years, I remember driving past those, and you can't. Drive past Comac Cinemas and not think of Rosie. Right. <laughs> exactly. And there's we actually have another shot even, er, I think, earlier. Oh, that's, yeah, that was the Emmys. That was when the, I was her date the first year when she won. Yeah. And it was a great, great night. So much fun. Isn't that incredible? Right, huh? Yeah. But, and she talked yeah. about the lemon drops. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Remind so, us of that. Tell well, us Well, so that. she... Uh, when she was, when she had been a kid, she had been up um, in the in the top balcony, uh, watching with her mom and uh, eating lemon drops, and that yeah. memory just stuck with her. And now she was on stage and Emmy winner. It was a remarkable night. Yeah, absolutely. and the beginning of her winning like eighty thousand Emmys, I think. That was yes, that was quite a night. I remember watching it. The Emmys are usually you know working in TV. That's something that I definitely always. I'm in tune with, and that's that. You guys cleaned up that night. <laughs> we really did. It was a, it was not to be. Oh, just like I cleaned up this night. Yes. <laughs> when I was a kid, I think I'm literally 15 years old here playing Tevia and Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, are you really 15? In, wow. At the Kirkwood Community Center. This is part of Mrs. Harvey's group that I told you about. Yeah. Yeah. What a fantastic experience. Wow. Do you, uh, have you gone back <clears throat> home to St. Louis and, you know, are there people who <clears throat> have seen your success and they're like, Hey, it's John. Hey, John, you know, uh, to, local to boy did good type thing. To a degree. I, I, I love going back and doing shows, cabaret shows where I play and sing. So I've, I was uh, fortunate enough to go back this past October. I was, you know, seeing mom and dad for the first time since this whole shutdown thing. And, uh, did a live show, although they watched it at home live stream because there were no vaccinations yet. Uh, but then I was, uh, we went back in April and I did another show and they came to see it and we had a great, great time. It was wonderful. And a lot of friends from high school uh, came down and or, or watched the live stream. That's another cool thing is that so many shows now are going to be live and stream so that folks can tune in from anywhere, which is a fantastic uh use of the technology that we have right exactly you know we were just talking about that we were went live uh right. on uh air Wesley uh, Uggams. Wesley Uggams. yeah at uh, 54 below that great place Little what was the uh, what was the event um she was doing we did a week like a long weekend of of shows um and i had worked with her on a couple of one-nighters, one big Julie Stein concert out in LA where I had a huge orchestra on stage. And she, we had kept in touch and she, we had done a few other concerts together. And then she said, hey, I'm gonna do this weekend. You wanna do it with me? So we put together um, sort of a, ret a little bit of a retrospective and some songs that she wanted to sing. And she's, she's so lovely. We ran into her on the street a couple of years ago and it was, it was one of those moments where you said goodbye and then you both realized you were walking the same direction. <laughs> <laughs> and we laughed and laughed, but she's the greatest. Yeah, that's fantastic. Again, having an opportunity to, uh, oh yeah, it's just 
And uh, even uh, our lovely viewer, Christine, sent in some photos. Oh, of look at that. Her. Yep, she oh. sent these to me uh, directly. Look how young we are. So we wanted to make <laughs> sure we, we sent the, we showed these, and they're on set at Rosie. Oh my gosh. Christine was one of our great, I mean, she's she's been such a great supporter all through the years. I just love her. Yeah, she's a big, uh, with our show here, a big fan and a love great, it. true lovity, absolutely. That's For a great sure. shot, huh? Yeah. She's probably jumping around in her living room right now, I don't doubt. <laughs> <laughs> don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt, don't fall down. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when you look at all of this, I mean, you, you, you've done a lot and you're super talented and you're you know, a nice guy and affable and uh, great wit, all of those things. But realizing that uh, it's all a blessing and it doesn't just come, you know, from the flip of a switch. It takes a lot of tenacity, yeah. resilience yeah. and, and fine tuning and, and perfecting it all. Uh, what are some of those continued blessings and joys in your life, John, that inspire you continually to be out there, to be working so hard to be, you know, you could, you've done quite a bit where you could easily be saying, you know, look, theater, television, all these other areas, I'm pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit back and relax and rest on those laurels, but that's not who you are. It's not who I am either. So. Yeah. What is, where does your inspiration come from to continue driving you forward and with the blessings that surround you in your life, John? Um, I think when I go to the mailbox and I get the bills, then I realize, oh, I got to work. That will do <laughs> it. That will do it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, this guy is my, my blessing. One of them. He's such a good boy. Um, my partner, Charlie, is the greatest. And my mom and dad and my sister and her partner, who are getting married. In September, we're so excited. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, really, wow. really happy so about that. So we, uh, we actually have, I believe there's a graphic for that. Um, you heard it first here, folks. It's a world premiere exclusive, oh. getting married in September. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you heard it on the Gym Master Show live. That Congratulations. So have you, uh, you've picked the spot, everything's all- They have picked, they're pick, they have picked, yes, they have picked the spot and uh, we've picked the date and now everyone's clamoring for airline reservations and all that stuff and Airbnbs and all that fun thing. But- um, That's gotta be we're nice. Really looking forward to bringing all the families together uh, in Connecticut, it's gonna be nice. Oh, it's be in Connecticut, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Very, very nice. Yes. So what, what, you mentioned some things, the things are really churning now. What are some cool things that we could look forward to that you're working on that are bubbling up for you, John? So thank you for asking. The um, Last summer, I, I music directed and produced the Playbill Pride Spectacular for Pride in New York and uh, on Playbill and with a bunch of wonderful artists. And I'm doing it again this year. And I'm currently uh, creating tracks uh, rehearsing with folks like B.D. Wong and Anthony Rapp and X. Mm -hmm. Crum and uh, 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 Leah Delary is going to be the host. And so it's going to be a fantastic show with some wonderful performances and creating all of that virtually and putting that together. Working, as I said, on Kristen's camp, we're producing a lot of uh, elements, uh, pre-production, uh, which will roll into the Christie Awards, which happens the last night of camp where we give our awards uh, and a Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, to a friend of ours, and um, and then I'm teaching my first university course at Fordham University uh, the month of June um, so with some fantastic students and other faculty. I'm getting I've never taught a course for credit, so I'm really trying to get really um, prepared and ready for that. <clears throat> and what will the course be? Music theater. It's a, it's a five week music theater intensive. Fantastic. And, uh, and then the O'Neill, where I'm going into my ninth season as artistic director of the Cabaret and Performance Conference there. And I'm going to have in. to come out and see you there. Oh, yeah. Maybe yes. go for lunch or something. I'd love to do that. It's so great. Come to one of the shows. We'll be outside yeah. this summer in the amphitheater. <clears throat> We're gussying it up and making it look really, really sweet and fancy. Have you um, been to the Kate yet? Catherine Hepburn Performing Arts Center? I have not. Cabaret? Oh, yes. And I've actually yeah. performed there. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that Fantastic. a great place? Kate. Yeah. Gorgeous, yeah. Terrific place. That whole neck of the woods is really, really great. Yeah. But this summer at the O'Neill, Telly Leung and Beth Level are coming uh, as special guests doing shows. So that's going to be fantastic. And then I'm going in October. I'm going back to the Gulf Shore Playhouse in Naples with three more weeks of cabaret shows. So yeah, that's um, amazing. That's a amazing. lot of stuff cooking, but it's it's great stuff, and I'm really happy about all of it. 
And Charles wanted to make sure it's not John getting married, it's your sister getting married in Connecticut. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did I say me? I didn't say my sister. <gasps> yes, a world premiere exclusive. His sister's getting married. Thank which you, is Charlie. Exciting. Yeah, he said, yeah. He's, he's got your back. He said Thank something you. earlier. He was raving. Uh, I don't know if it's still there, but he was talking about what a great guy you are and uh, how awesome you are, which is fantastic. Uh, 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 have you worked together, you guys? Charlie? Uh, Oh, Charlie. Charlie's my partner. Oh, didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, another world premiere exclusive, gang. That's right. <laughs> so That's he will right. be, he's going to be at the wedding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is fantastic. So yeah, you love your family. Yeah. And welcome, Charles. It's good to see you here. Um, so you are, uh, you're blessed and happy and you're, you're living your bliss. You're doing what you love and truly loving what you what you do. Right? And trying to live it every day because you kind of don't know when that last day is going to be. And I really want to make sure every day is filled with joy yeah. and yeah. love and music. And yeah. that's my goal. And uh, as we've learned over the course of this past year, truly life is short, life is precious. And uh, like yeah. uh, you and I were talking before we went live on the air, I hope that, you know, out of everything we've experienced that we uh, rise out of these ashes, more empathetic, more compassionate, more unified, more collaborative. I, I think so. it's really important. <clears throat> and we've had these moments uh, and opportunities available right in front of us to do that. Uh, and that's how I, you know, I've always been that way, but that's how I want to proceed. Uh, really? I tend to be somebody who likes to bring extremes together and see how we can come together because everybody's welcome to the party. Well, that's welcome. what we need because we're such a strangely divided country right now. Yeah. Like world. And so, yeah. Um, finding common ground is really important. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're the best, my friend. This was fantastic. Jim, and, and, is it over? <laughs> it, does, <laughs> it doesn't have to be. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding. You're a wonderful host. Thank you for inviting me to come on and be with you and spend some time with you. It's really, really sweet. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. And uh, we'll keep the porch light on for you. Maybe we'll have you play a little something next time. Because cool. I know yeah, my, I, my setup is not at the piano right. now because I'm doing all these tracks in my other studio. So it's, right. it, it, it wasn't. But yes, another time for sure. And so folks the, can go on my Facebook, John McDaniel, um, and all my videos, a lot of videos and stuff is there. Also my YouTube channel. Right, exactly. It's right. maybe hard to find because there's a lot of John McDaniels with video content. Okay. <laughs> How dare they? Um, yeah, because a couple of people asked, is he gonna play and all, and we, we had talked about that, but you're you're working on some other projects where the system is set up specifically yes, my for whole that. Yeah, setup is not, yeah. After I did my last Sunday tea, it all shifted to the other part of the house. Right, exactly. So we will have you come back. Well, I hope that the show, John, met whatever expectations you had and that you enjoyed the time with me and all the loveties as much as I certainly have Absolutely. with you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Till next time. Till next time. Yes. Uh, hopefully we will uh, break bread and maybe see you over at the O'Neill or uh, in the city, what have Definitely. you. Definitely. Let me know. That would be a pleasure. Keep up Thank all you. the amazing work. And, Thank uh, you. And thanks to your audience. Oh, yeah. And showering us with all of your amazing uh, talent. Just to show you a couple of comments coming in here. Wonderful spending the evening with you, John. Oh. XOXO. That was from Jill Jason, who's watching. Oh, and Jill. I Jill. Know. Yeah. Good friend Very and good. Uh, fan of the show as well. And she's usually here all the time, which we oh, love. Cool. And uh, Jen Barry in Allentown, Pennsylvania says, thanks, John. And yeah. Merlin in Ontario, Canada says, great to have met you, John. Take care. Stay safe. Nice. Uh, you. you too. And Charles <laughs> says, come on, sing something. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody oh, knows. there you go. Now with right, we match doctors. That was we're good. We're going to have any sounds from your uh, loved one there in your <laughs> the beautiful puppy. Uh, thanks, John and Clarence. And first time viewer, great show. We, John, do we not love first time viewers? Yes, very, very much. <laughs> and it's not uh, John from Jersey, it's Carolina Four, first time viewer. Good to have you with us. Thank right you on. very much. And uh, Christine Clifton, of course. John, thanks so much for sharing so much of your life, music, and career with Jim and all the viewers. This oh. was a terrific conversation. So cute seeing our photos. You're a great lovity. That's right. You're now a lovity. I know you, you know, right. Grammys um emmys 
stuff we like saw, that. We saw the clip uh, from the Tony Awards earlier, yeah. all these different things. Yeah. When, you, when you get a lovety on the Jim Masters show live, it's, so it's your a feet are tingling. Exchange. You've worked all your life for this, haven't you? I have. <laughs> I've lived for this moment, and I do appreciate it, actually. <laughs> and uh, it's our pleasure, my friend. Uh, Kathy says, thanks for sharing your time with us, John. You, She's in Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, and I love uh, Cleveland. Cleveland and uh, Maureen. It's been Quite fun, nice John. Story. Love any hugs to you and Clarence, Amy. Thank uh, thanks, thank, uh, thanks, John and Clarence, and a couple more that came in here. Um, actually, Marty, before we go, he had this question. He uh, is originally from Australia. He lives in Nashville with his wife. Oh, nice. Uh, he's known as the Aussie crooner, really cool guy. Uh, good day, mate. Curious to know, Patty LuPone. Uh, what is she like? She's one of my favorite performers. She is hilarious and she is warm and uh, full of laughter. I've had the pleasure of visiting her home in Kent, Connecticut, which is glorious. That's right. That's and a beautiful we, town. Charlie and I went to see her in company in London and went backstage after and spent some time in her dressing room. And it's like no time has gone by. I mean, she's she's fantastic. One of the, One of the good eggs in this business for sure. Somebody else famous, well, quite a few people came out of Kent, Connecticut. Uh, Seth McFarlane is from Kent. Is he? Yeah, right. Kent, yeah, yeah. Kent, Kent area she, there. She's not from there, I guess, but she lives there now and has has for years. Once stayed at a bed and breakfast in that town. I don't even know if it's still oh, there. there. Is it famous? It's, it's like the Fife and Drum, is it? This one was called the English Chaucer House. Ah, okay. And it was really, really nice. And that was in Kent, a really beautiful, uh, beautiful spot there. And uh, that's Northwest Connecticut for people that are watching. Uh, Charles says, excellent show. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Austin thank Field you, says, another great show from Austin Field. Thank you. Kathleen Walker, who is still jumping around, excited because she saw the rosy clip with the New York Mets, who she works for. <laughs> <laughs> she says uh, she's in Queens, New York. She says, thanks, John, for spending time with us and oh, your thanks, doggy Kathy. too. And uh, yeah. smiles coming in and hearts from Jen Barry in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Uh, Christopher Joseph in Ohio. Uh, great show tonight. Thank you, Christopher. Nice to see you here as well. And a couple more. Uh, thanks, John, Gosh. from Maeve. Uh, thanks, John. Great as always. And thanks, know, Jim. Maeve. Our thanks, Maeve. pleasure. And Soraya. Thanks, John, for coming to this awesome show. I did miss you from Rosie O'Donnell's show. So missing you and nice to see you again. And uh, you are the best and fun to watch on television. Yay. And uh, Christine Clifton, hugs to you, uh, Charlie and Clarence. Enjoy all your summer fall projects. Thanks again. Thank you. And uh, Marty Thompson says, we're so blessed to have the opportunity to meet so many cool people. Great show. Thank you, Marty. I appreciate that as well. Thanks, Marty. This was fantastic. Uh, well, thank you, Jim. I really do appreciate George it. and I say good night. <laughs> good night, George. Good night, Gracie. Good night, John. <laughs> you got to have fun, right? Absolutely. And, uh, again, biased, but I haven't um been this entertainment or seen what do you think been this <laughs> i like that thank you very that. much that since nice. the rosie o'donnell show uh, hang on i can fix that <laughs> oh again biased but i haven't been this entertained since the rosie o'donnell show there you go there we go, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it said Thank you, Charles. I appreciate that. I really enjoyed tonight. Thank you, John and Jim. This right is the on. kind of thing. This is the kind of thing we do all the time, folks. Uh, great. Seven great. days a week, and uh, when we uh, have great guests like John, it just gets enhanced even more. Thank you, my friend. Uh, Absolutely, new, new friend made, and I wish right you on. again all the continued blessings and all good and things for you. With everything coming up. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, and let's definitely stay in touch. Okay. Right on. You got it. Now, as I say to all the guests, go stretch those legs. Yes. <laughs> Did you eat dinner already? Go to the Love bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Did you eat dinner already? Oh, yeah. Good, 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 good. Because the ones out in the West Coast, they're like, no, I haven't eaten yet. Right. <laughs> I got to tell them, have a, snack before, have a snack before you come on the Gym Master Show. For sure. Uh, Amy, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Very kind. All right. And uh, Anne, one more. Jacksonville. 
Really enjoyed tonight. Thank you, John and Jim. Right John, on. John and Jim, we thank you, Anne. Take care, my friend. You uh, be well, and thanks for all the time with us tonight. We said an hour, hour and twenty. That that's a short night. <laughs> well, it's all good. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. See Take care. Again. All right. Thanks. Cheers. Bye bye now. John McDaniel, right here, live on the Jim Masters Show, live. Charles, thank you very much for chiming in. Uh, good night to you as well. And I think I saw something where you say you're also originally from uh, New York, from out on Long Island, I think, as well. And uh, hey, gang, we'd love it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. It's the channel you're watching right now.